Life Network's television show. And we're sitting here with the more order of the round table. We have Abdullah, we have brother um, Taj Tariq Bey, and we have sister Raz Mariah. So I just wanted them to briefly tell the people exactly what it is that they are bringing to the people, the type of vital information that could um, liberate the people in the truest sense and uplift them spiritually, mentally, and physically. So having said that, let's start with the um, sister. Um, tell them your name and tell them uh, exactly what you spoke on during your interview. Peace. Hi. Peace and love. I'm Sister Rosman Raya Bay. Um, you asked what we were bringing to the people. And the truth is, is that we're not really bringing anything to them. We're just... Uh, we have or know what is already here and opening up the mind to look at it because we have all been miseducated and mistaught. And so the greatest part, I think, of what we would be, if you would say bringing, because I just want to make sure that it's not that people think that, that we're bringing something that wasn't already here, because it was already here. It's just that we've been miseducated to not be able to see it. That's the distinction I'm really trying to make here. And so we're doing that, and I think we're doing it in a way where we're showing them the proof. We're showing that it's a little bit of study, just a little bit of study. And everyone can see that we are all one, truly are, are one. All right? Um, I need you to, if you may, could you elaborate on some of the things that you talked about? Because mm -hmm. um, although, like you said, this, this information has always existed. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have any clue as to, you know, because you just gave us kind of like a roundabout thing, but could you just go more into detail? Um, yeah. Uh well, that could take forever. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, but the, yeah, just some quick, you know, as quick as you can, and then just leave your information for them to get in contact yes, with yes. you. All right, you all right. I I understand what you're saying. Well, Where I. Are you going to speak at? Well, we're, we're talking about nationality and birthright issues. We are. We're definitely talking about that. And that means that we're all born with it. It's not something that someone created or what have you. It's born. We're born with it. And I come, I come from the um, uh, part of astrologics, the culture of, you know, what is laid and fixed, which is the law. All right? All law manifested into the flesh is Allah. It said, like, arm, leg, leg, arm, head. And we need to know ourselves because all, all of the disciplines say, man, know thyself. And we know that it says that, but we don't necessarily know how do we do that. We really don't know. We think we do. And what I basically said that's, I think, important, it brings a great interest to the people because it, it, when it hits their ears, it feels good in their heart. That means it's for us, for you. Is that the astrology wheel, which was supposedly arrested and disbanded, and we're not and it's something that's negative. It's just totally not true. It's the science of the universe, because the universe is mathematical, and it was left by our ancestors as a teaching tool to teach us the characteristics of man. And so we don't need Barney and Yogi Bear and all of those things that others have created. <laughs> for ourselves or our children, we already have what our ancestors left. And so I think that brings about an, a great interest in people wanting to learn it. Because one thing we can certainly say, it's been around for a very, very long time. Now, some of the lecture, uh, heard you said something about, um, you know, uh, <coughs> both man and female. Oh, yeah. You had, um, oh, we can't hear him? No, no, all right, go ahead. That woman is both man and female. Yeah, that's kind of mind blowing, isn't it? Here's the seat. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, you've been coming back here for many years. You know. Yeah. I've heard it before, but for the people yeah. who are listening, I just want you to go into detail. All right, all right. Man is a species. We all agree with that. All species are determined by the female. I think we all know that, not agree with it. We know this to be true. So if we didn't, we can't agree with it at this point. So. Man is womb man. And they took the, and you know, and shortened it to woman. But the suppression of the natural people, us, was in fact to suppress not the man, not the male species, but the creator, the woman. And so by doing that, she's the first person to teach from the womb, 
is the first school room. That's the true first school room. And by doing that, she then passes down this limited, suppressed fear knowledge to her children. So, and I was saying that we say what's wrong with our children, and it's really what's wrong with us, because we're the first teachers. So, so a woman is the ex, and symbolized anyway by that X, you know, with the four legs or what appears to be, and then the Y, kind of missing a leg. And so we have this wonderful thing, sisters, you're going to love this. We just say that they are skippy because they're kind of skipping along without that little extra leg. And when things go on, just call it a skippy moment and keep it moving because we love our sons as well. You know, it's not a matter of who's better or who's lesser or who's inferior. Or who's. It's a matter of putting it in order. We've been expecting our sons to do things that they cannot produce. We have, and we put that pressure on them, and this is why we have the sickness, I think, that we have in our families, coupled with, of course, the obvious uh, uh, suppression that the, that the, I say, demi, or demos, or demon craft, as they say, or democracy, because all of that is man-made. Demi, or demi, which the etymologists can, um, can confirm, means something lesser than like as in demigod, as they would say. Demi, it's, it's inferior. So we, are, we say we are superior, or we say that we are the mothers and fathers of civilization, and we all say this, so we need to act like it and not ever say that we're descendants of slaves because those are Slavics. We are, have been enslaved. So if the women don't get it straight, there's no hope. There's no hope for the generations to get it straight. The men are there to do and help and do what they're gonna do and be the warriors. But if the women don't get it straight, it doesn't matter what he does. And, and I wanna say this because this issue has been, like you said, you've heard it. I've heard it, I've said it. I've also heard other men say to me, well, it's, it's really gonna be a, a matriarch and a patriarch. Let me just say this for the record. A matriarch includes the male a patriarch excludes the female. It can never be that because that is not rooted in nature. That, in fact, is the problem to even think that that's what's going to go down. That is what has been applied to us by them suppressing us with the patriarchal thinking, and it's false, and that's why it's falling. All right. You, You're welcome. Oh. RV Bay publication. Well, I have a website that's not up yet, but I'm going to give you two two different things. It's real simple. RV Bay at Juno dot com. That's the email, <coughs> and RV Bay publications dot com. It's coming forth. All right. Thank you. Sure. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks for having us here. I was second, that's why. Yes. I'm Abdullah Il Taleb Boxy Bay. He's long winded. <laughs> so I figure I'd get mine in right now. Yes, um it's 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 a it's an honor. It's an honor to you know to be on this show, um uh, but a med show. Uh what I talked about, you know, the title of the lecture is political jurisdiction and economics. And my focus was to reconnect the Moors who are now branded Negro, colored, and black to the ancient astronomy juris jurisprudence principles of our republic, the United States Republic, and the founders of this government are the Moors who are now branded, once again, Negro, colored, black, referring to who are the people. One. I defined, gave the 1936 Webster's English Dictionary, Universal Webster's English Dictionary definition of the name American, which is an aboriginal or one of the copper colored natives found on the American continent by the Europeans. The original application of the name. So now that puts your focus on, hmm, well that, that would, not, would not be George Bush, Bill Clinton, John Kerry, you know, so we've been conditioned and socially engineered to 
called the Europeans Americans. And as when they, so with that, the, when the focus of, is, to rest, is to steal our birthright. So we got to, so the key is to bring our people back to the right state of mind to challenge the Europeans' false claim and to, and to put our people in the right frame of mind to reclaim our birthright. So we got to know who we are and know who the European foreigner colonists are. This on the back of the Federal Reserve note, which is not a dollar bill, all right, it's a note. The word dollar comes from the German word Jochum Stahler, and which is the shortened for Taller, Dutch word Taller, and the modern English word D-O-L-L-A-R, dollar, which means a silver coin. So I'm just going to give you some points of reference. In the, in the Constitution, Congress shall Congress have the power to coin money and to determine the value thereof. The state shall not make anything but gold and silver legal tender for the payments of all debts, public and private. So once you understand that this is not money, this is not a dollar, that this instrument of debt, of credit, a labor control instrument, it's just that. It can control the labor of the people and to put the people in perpetual debt. And so this is one of, this is one of the root causes of what's going on today in the economy. Also, you have a colonial fraud jurisdictional corporate entity called the U.S. democracy that has taken over the legitimate government which is the United States Republic. And during the Civil War period, the, folk, the point of the Civil War was to dismantle the legitimate and lawful government, which is the Republic. Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution reads, the United States shall guarantee a Republican form of government in all the states in the Union. The children in school pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Now, the teachers turn around and push democracy. Politicians turn around and push democracy. And we clap for them. Do you understand what's going on? Because you have a imposter government, an imposter corporate structure that has taken over the legitimate republic government. So until we understand jurisdiction and e economics and how it's connected to the Moors as our being the founders of the United States Republic. So this is, these are the points that I talked about and just giving some references so that we can get the people's focus on the, and the right track of thinking. All right, peace. Thank you. All right, next we have Brother Taj Tariq Bey, and he's going to go into a little bit about what he's going to bring this evening. Yes, but well, we're dealing with the same issue. But the, the issue that we're bringing to is a consciousness of the relativity of things. And people aren't aware that all these things are relative. And the other thing is uh, <laughs> we're dealing, dealing with facts, historical facts, law, jurisprudence, um, etymology, because most of the information that our people deal with is uh, come from perspectives of emotions or what they believe or what they're partial to or what their own biases are that have not necessarily anything to do with the facts, which is why we don't solve anything. We just have rallies and cheer on each other and go back tomorrow in line paying tickets that don't belong to us with no remedy while talking about we got power and then watching our babies die more and more in the street. And then even dealing with um, instruments and things that we deal with every day that deal with our economics, our life, our security, our families, and not actually knowing what we're dealing with. But then we keep talking about what we believe when we don't even know that that's elementary. You know, and so what we're doing today, as we've always done, is try to bring the people to a higher ascended level of knowledge and understanding, not, to, not for them to disrespect belief, but to understand that belief is for children. But adults are supposed to put their childish things away and deal with mathematics and science. And so we want to make sure that they understand the science, not just in rhetorical form, but give them some substantive information to back it up. That's basically what we're dealing with. My, name, my number is 
area code 215-300-5471. My email is etymologyvocabulary at hotmail.com. That's how you can get in contact with me. We have etymology, thank you, E-T-Y-M-O-L-O-G-Y, vocabulary, V O C A B U. L A R Y at hotmail dot com. Thank you very much because I assume, and I shouldn't assume that that people know how to spell it because some people have never heard the word before. All right, not familiar. Etymology is the history and origin of words. Etym means history, origin, real and true. And ology, study of and words. Also, before I just sign off, I would like someone to just. Very briefly, tell me what does nationality mean, what does sovereignty mean, and very briefly, what is the, the importance and significance of it? As an example, to be very uh, more or less without going through a, a deep dispensation of information, when you look at the problems with the Asiatics in North, Central, South America, and on the islands, and you see the poverty, particularly that, like you see in AT, whereas AT is uh, deliberately suppressed because that's the main, one of the major republics in the Western Hemisphere that resisted colonial, Christendom, um, crusade occupation of the North lands. Um, the condition of the people is because the birthright was stolen. The condition of the people here in North America is because their birthright was stolen. The condition of the people on the islands is because their birthrights were stolen. The condition of the people in South America is because their birthrights were stolen. The birthright is tied to nationality. The Moorish Empire consists of what you call today Tamari, that is Africa, even across the, the Nile, even into North, Central, South America, and the adjoining islands comprise Maghrib al Aqsa, or Morocco. The Nile, even into North, Central, South America, and the adjoining islands comprise Maghrib al Aqsa, or Morocco, the farthest west. All of those people are Moors. We fell into tribalism that helped lose our birthright, battling with each other. Same people thinking we're different people. We're the true Amerikans or Americans. The European colonists took over and started calling themselves Americans and started changing the history saying that they brought us here. We were always here. You've got Pyramid Kuntas in Central and South America that are older than the pyramids in Giza in Misraim that the people call Egypt. Older. You've got civilization principles that are here in Lower Egypt that you call Kentucky and Tennessee area that are older than they are in what you call Egypt. But those things are held secret because they don't want these people to know that they're the heirs apparent to this land, so they branded them Negro, black, and colored to cut off the linear history. So when the people think they're Negro, black, and colored, they can't tie to the illustrious history of the founders of civilization. And as a matter of fact, they keep trying to leave and everybody else trying to come here because they don't even know that this is the hub, the North Gate, even though they have people that are keepers of the North Gate. In other words, they got your birthright. Now, the sovereignty is tied to nationality. That is the, the self-authority authority that's allodial that is the opposite of feudal, with your capacity to exercise rights unalienable in society, which also establishes rank. It is absolutely tied to nationality. This is why they took the nationality from the people and branded them these adjectives. And now when the people think that these adjectives are actually natal identities and they attach to them, they don't even know that they're actually caste systems, legal caste systems, that apply to also bodies of laws that was written by the church, i.e., mainly the black codes. And as soon as they agree that, they're that those, le those laws legally apply to them because that's a confession. That is a contract, oral or written. And since they don't honor their mothers and fathers, they serve in Rome. That's what the problem is. 
Mm. Our job is to undo that mental injury and to show them both what he was saying, the etymology, because most of them don't even know that the word black is Middle English. It has no ancient history on the planet. And it's in its original form, it actually means pale. Because it, it, it really addressed the negro yavera arebo, which is the, neg, which is the uh, black chimpanzee monkey or the troglodyte nigger, which you know as the paleolith, which is the caveman, because that's where it came from. And so now our people think they negroes, simply because the Europeans switched to history. So if they don't know linguistics, language, and history, they get caught up in these emotional arguments of who they like to follow or who they like to believe, and it has nothing to do with any of that. We have to bring them back to knowledge because they're being destroyed for a lack of knowledge, not a lack of belief, not a lack of faith, not a lack of prayer, lack of knowledge. The important thing is that, I always got something to say, sorry, but it's important to put the dye, yeah, put the dye on it. The important thing that is being said here, all of it is important, is this. You think it's racism, and it is not. It is birthright theft, as he just explained. Thank you very much for this quick interview, and I'll allow you to finish what you're doing. Thank you for your patience, too. Thank you for your patience. How many of you heard the name Rothschild before? Uh huh. Do you know what Rothschild means? Red Shield. What is the Red Shield? might say that, you've been shielded from the workings of the wise red men, sorcerers. You've been shielded from that knowledge. That's also part of the great Masonic secret. It's not just a family. Do you understand? Now, listen. The debt notes that they issued under the Federal Reserve note was to create a dead promise in order to trade your labor, give you nothing, and every time you spend, it would represent a deficit, and they would put against the birth certificate, the marriage certificate, and licenses that are tagged to you. Are you follow me? I want you to follow me slowly because I want you to be very, very clear on what's happening to you. All right? Now, what they did, birth certificates are mortgages. Did you know that? Your idea is that mortgages were just what they claimed to loan you on houses. They lied. Birth certificates are mortgages. Marriage certificates are mortgages. And marriage certificates are filed in the Department of Orphans. Yes, so they can kill your babies later. That's true. And you. And driver's license is the latest version of the dead promise mortgages. And they use all those numbers, and they make CUSIC, what is known as a CUSIC, number that's attached to you that they create that all letters when you see them all capital letters on licenses birth certificates and stuff like that that's corporations that's created by the red sorcerers of Europe to mortgage you that's your bureaucratic slavery and that's what it's always been then they establish the church to keep you busy while they rape you and steal your land. That's what the term says when, you know, when he came amongst these Asiatics, gave them the Bible and took the land. Nothing wrong with the book. The concept about the book is wrong. Do you understand? And keep in mind, we're talking about jurisdiction and economics. Because if you don't understand this, you will be rolled in this thing that's taking place now, and you've only seen the shoe drop. A boot is coming a little later on. Because they've only dealt with about 7% of what's going down. Did you know that? You think all this stuff is all of that, what's going on? No. 
That's about 7% of the problem. All right? So now you didn't know that these mortgages were dead promises. Now you do. How many of you are in debt? And that's what you said. You see, that's, the, that's, that's also part of the problem. You're charged with being in debt. Are you following me? You're not truly in debt. You're charged with being in debt. Now, again, raise your hand. How many got a mortgage? All right. How much did they give you on your mortgage? Just as an example. No. Speak up. What is a mortgage? What did they give you when you obtained that mortgage? Oh, that's not what you were starting to say earlier. No, you see what our problem is again? Huh? Did they give you any money? No, but they did give you a contract to sign, didn't they? Yeah. No, they took some fiat from you. Mm -hmm. But I thought they loaned to you. Hmm, interesting. Within probably three hours to three days that you signed that paper, it was no longer in that office. It may have been in Brazil. It may be in Russia. It may be anywhere on this planet with the multiple signatures on it. And it stopped being what you thought it was. Now, do you know what occurred when you signed that document? Of course you did, but did you know what occurred? All right, this is what occurred. They didn't give you any money, and they didn't transfer any money at all. What they did when you signed that contract, they said, in the contract that you agreed for them to have power of attorney of your interest on the straw that they created on you, on a QCIC number, dealing with any birth certificates that they could trace on you, anything coming from the state that they could trace on you, and acting as your agent under wardship tenures, sold that bond to someone else with a promise that you'll pay or die. It's a dead promise. Mort means mortuary. Mortus means dead, it's Latin. Mortus. All right. Now, well, how does that fit in there? All right, we'll get to that. That, that's another bond on the bond, on the bond of the bond that split and fractionalized. <laughs> Promising, hold on. No, really, let's, let, we're really identifying what it really is because you need to know what's going on. That's, say I send, sell you an insurance on that mortgage. You're promising that she's never going to live to pay for it. Now, so a noble one to him, he promises that she will. Then another person buys a piece of his promise. And another person buys a piece of your promise. Then we split that again and sell it over there. Then we split it again and sell it over there. Now, let's look at this. Pay close attention. The world's monetary value, in fact, which includes the value monetarily of all the countries on the planet known as Earth, and I'm going to give you round numbers, is approximately, approximately 68 trillion. Are you following me? Hmm? Well, <clears throat> These crusaders that have been calling themselves Americans and are not, 
and claim to be Jews and they are not. And claiming your birthright and have done things in your name and made you hate yourself and you don't know yourself, have built up a debt by doing this fractionalized mortgages. And we, now remember, this is the whole world. This is the world. That's the whole world, all the countries. Well, you know what they did? This is what they're about, somewhere in this area. I think it's, forget, apologize, but I'm, I'm close. Now listen, we're going to go again. This is the entire world, actually, in actual value. The wealth of the countries, all of the countries on the planet Earth, this is the total wealth combined. This is what the thieves of what you have been calling the White Boys Network have done to you just in this, under the U.S. demos. This is what these demons have done. That's, it. That's what this mortgage problem really is that they ain't telling you. Hold on, we ain't finished yet. This is what happened. That mortgage they gave you, that dead promise, they sold insurance. Somebody said, your house is going to burn down. Then they sold insurance with someone else that says, you'll never live to pay it. Of course you won't, but that's not the point. Um, then someone else was sold insurance that you will, and they hedge it against each other. Then they package that up and sell that again. Then they package that up, fractionalize it, and sell them again. And it's all fine until somebody tries to cash the main instrument. Then the house of cars falls apart. Fiat means faith. Keep this in mind. Fiat. F IAT is what that Federal Reserve note is. Means it has absolutely no value. It is based on idol god worship. I.E. Christendom, the Crusaders, specifically the Spanish Inquisition. It is designed to steal the land and to steal your labor, give you nothing, then put you in the debt, then charge you with the debt, then either imprison you, send your children to war, and or exterminate you for a pound of flesh on a dead promise, on a debt that never existed. And the bankers get the land, get the real estate, and you're in debt, and they never gave you anything. And the interest is designed to outrank the principal, and it can never be paid. Stop, brother. Yes. And also, anyone that ever been locked up, they use that DC number or that mm -hmm. number. Yes. They use that on the, in, in, on the market for trading. Yes. And if anybody know how to do it, they can go online on uh, fidelity.com. And they, you, can, you can trace your, your, your bonds. 
Yes. That's your bondage. The bondage is not change they had in 1865. Your bondage is paper, contracts. Do you understand? Now, when Noble Ali set up the old Canaanite temple in 1913 to restore the birthright to the people, and he told them, you're part and parcel of this said government, then you had other agents amongst us who said, we ain't part of this. He ain't talking about government. He talking about let us pray to distort the people's attention. And a lot of people never took seriously what he said. And now you're all caught, just like he told you would be. You ain't got no land. Your families is falling apart. Your babies are dying. And you don't own anything. But you're charged as owners. Not one of you own your home. And you're charged as owners. On top of the debt that's been fractionalized, you'll never get out of it. Continue. They think. That's the whole point. Someone think. Now, hold on. Write these words down. It's important for you to understand. Because this is what you're going to do in your lessons when you leave here. Because you already know we won't have time to go through all those. You're going to write down a lodial. A-L-L-O-D-I-A-L. D-I-A-L. Then write verses feudal. These deeds that they've been giving you come under feudal law. They have F-E-U-D-A-L. Now, how many people have done any work in their houses lately that filled out anything called a permit? Any work that you've done where you've gotten a permit? You never read it? Well, for your instruction and for you to have a better understanding, next time you see somebody who gets a permit who signs up for a permit, if you pay attention to where it signs, where they ha tell the people to sign their name, you'll see underneath this where the signature goes, owner in fee in fee. That's a legal term and what it means owner in feudal law. And this is back to where our people be signing things and doing things and they don't know what they're doing but they're believers though they know Jesus. They know Allah and all that stuff. I'm serious. They saved and you ain't. And they serve in Rome right on with their hypocritical selves while their babies is dying in the street. And can't even hold money, don't even know they don't even have money. They're not allowed to have money. And you tell them that truth, and they'll call you the devil. <laughs> For real. And pay tax on it. Are you understanding? Yeah. The status of the people is civil litter mortuus. Write that down. Civil litter, C I V I L I T E R. Civil litter mortuus, M O R T U U S. That's the status of the people that are branded Negro, black, and colored. Civil litter mortuus, it means dead in the eyes of the law. Oh, let me start writing this just so you don't let me help out. Are you got that about this thing here? All right. Those are approximates. It might be a little higher, but those are approximates. They're close enough to give you the idea of the stretch. Hmm? Hmm? Yes. Yes, because it means it's Latin. And remember that our ancient forefathers dealt with law, or what you call the science that treats of positive law, which is jurisprudence, in Latin. We dealt with biology in Latin. We deal with mathematics and geometry in Arabic, Aramaic, etc. We, we spoke multiple languages, not just one.
All right, so don't get it twisted thinking that when we speak different languages that we're different people. That's a lie. Got to get that straight too. It's just that we were dumbed down and think that we only spoke one language. That's how ignorant we became under Christian crusader rulership. Gave up the land, took on the idol god worship, and we've been poor ever since. And too arrogant and hypocritical to admit it while our babies are dying in the street, younger and younger. And we lie and tell them that they saved. Don't even know what money is. Son. A lodial versus feudal. A lodial, make them a little, lat, little bigger than that. Bigger? Like this big? Yeah, yes. So they can see it in the back, so they can write. Allodial. Now, a lodial means, it's a legal term which means, in fact, free and unencumbered and not beholding to any lord, etc. Having the capacity of true ownership of your estate and yourself. The absolute opposite of feudal. So you're dealing with polar opposites. So the condition of the people here that keep struggling for so-called freedom are living under feudal law, thinking they live in free. That's, again, one of your problems. One of the greatest mistakes with most of these Asiacs is that they think they're free. They think that the injury is an attitude. They call it racism. They don't like my color. Color even means fake. It don't mean complexion. That's another legal term. Write that down. Color means fake. That which is contrary to that which is real. Contradistinctive to that which is real or true. So if you say you're people of color, you're saying you're fake people. Phony. Prima facie, faking it, artifice, fraud. So you better be careful what you say because it has meanings that you didn't know it have. So you better learn a little bit about law. It's not, bro. It's exactly correct. It's, it's, it's out of the bounds. It's put in a corporate area where they can tax it. But when your land really is, your deed doesn't need it. This is why all of the deeds are actually just simply paper. They're paper constructs. They're actually other bonds. And they are mortgaged off. Oh, let's, let's get back to this so we make sure so that everybody knows what happens. Who knows what power of attorney is? I know you do, brother. I don't see enough hands raised. I <laughs> Get that elbow. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. It's power of attorney. When you give over your right. It's power of attorney. Power of attorney is when you give over your right for someone else to have, uh, um, to speak for your or authorization over your straw man or who, over. Uh, yeah, people, most people don't even know they got straw man. Or over your, over your person, who, who, over who you are. All right. Now, what you want to make sure that you do, never stutter when you give that answer again. Make sure you got it together and get, you're right, but don't stutter. In law, you stutter, it's neutralized. Right. Now, understand this. Power of attorney is when you become no different than this thing that's sitting on the wall, a stiff board picture. This is only a representation. That's why men of the Barristers Association of England, who most of these people use in their name anyway, can only represent them in a court action because they can't speak for themselves. Are you following me? That constitutes, when you get representation from a barrister, you become, at that point, a straw man too.
because you have no rights. That's why if you speak, the judge will tell you, the magistrate, the magistrate, the magician will tell you to shut the hell up. Right. Now remember, what our discussion here is jurisdiction and economics. And what it's really about, not what you may have thought it's about. What it's really about. Because our interest with speaking to you is to get you through some of the mud so you can start exercising some allodial rights for change. Not believe anything. We ain't asking you to believe not one thing. We want you to get on some Teflon skates and start doing some rolling. For real. All right? Understand that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are both demos. Demos is really the collective body of Europeans that adopted some of the ancient Asiatic principles that set up what you would call in their dispensation Western civilization. It means the people in Greek, the common people. That's what that means. <coughs> Do you understand? Yes, and they stole your legacy. They stole your legacy. Do you understand? The uh, Republican Party is really an offshoot or a blending or a cover up of the Wigglemore parties. Or what you know is the Whigs Party. Yes. And that got its name in 1853 here in Philadelphia. 1853. And uh, they became the White Party or White People. 1863, Chicago, Illinois. And between Philadelphia, no, it's 1854, I apologize, 1854, Philadelphia, 1863, Chicago, with the Knights of Columbus and Ku Klux Klan Oath. And that's when Red Shield, or the wise Red Sorcerers, took on the caste title for the European sons as white people. Before then, they were never known as white people because it's a status, not an identity. Legal, and you need to know that. They're red men. Yes, before then, that's what Rothschild, that's Red Shield. And you're shielded from that knowledge. That's a Masonic secret. That's why all Masons wear our fez because they took your crown, traded places with you. Now, y'all the niggers, when really, nigger is actually the troglodyte nigger, which is the scientific name for the caveman and negro, yaver, arebo, black chimpanzee, monkey, European is the nigger, scientifically and factually. And it's not a negative. It's a scientific name for the species, for the hybrid. He's a heterogeneous hybrid. It's not a secret except to our people who think they niggers, which also takes you out of your birthright. See, because you must honor your mothers and your fathers in order to claim the inheritance. Are you following? We're speaking in law. We're given history and some chronology, but we're speaking in anthropological and jurisprudence principles so that you can understand why it's necessary for you to understand nationality. We're not just throwing it at you as an interesting subject. We want you to understand the legal implications so that you know how to use it. And so you know why the Europeans coined the names Negro, Black, and Colored legally, not just because Noble Drawley said it, so that you can un understand its legal function in society and why you must undo it, all right? Not to undo it is not in your interest. 
So don't take this emotionally, what we're saying to you. This is legal implications. Because it locks you, status-wise, in a legal condition that is absolutely negative that you cannot remove. So when they be calling you black and Negro, you be looking at it just as what they calling you this week. But you need to know it has legal implications. And it has a jurisdictional, political, spiritual, and economic function. Better know how things work. Also, I want you to write down the word in full life. They're separate words. And make sure you capitalize the first letter. Uh, we don't have to go into that. No. Because mm -hmm. uh, she was suggesting that we use the, the, the law dictionary to, to, to give you some of the definition. I don't want to go there because I want you to start studying. You don't want to keep telling you everything. We want, see, because if you go and research it yourself, it doesn't become something that you heard at the Pearl of Africa. It becomes your own. Then you begin to understand how the world looks at you. And a lot of things that you've been calling prejudice is really your own ignorance. They've been taking advantage of you because you don't know better, like little boys and girls, because you're in a minority mental state. Oh, look that up, too, because it don't mean what you think it means. It don't mean numbers. It's mental state, your capacity to deal with your affairs or not. And it's back to the sovereignty issue, too, that we were talking about earlier. Now, um, just as an interest, how many of you know any people that um, is battling a foreclosure? You do? All right. Let's talk about a little bit of strategy real quick. I'm going to go back to this, but I want to throw something out here to give you something to work with. Say you're a banker, right? And um, you're foreclosing on me. Um, so now um, they're talking about they're going to foreclose. You know, you get so many days and all this stuff. And um, so I'm going to meet with you. I'm going to have a tape recorder and I'm going to have witnesses. I'm going to ask you to produce under the law of discovery, because when an action is issued against you, you have a right to discovery. Everybody know what discovery is? All right. Discovery is where, is any claim that's made against you, you have a right to any document or claim that they have, so you have the same evidence that they have upon which they're initiating the action for this particular litigation. So under the rule of discovery, I want them to bring to the table, since they're foreclosing, the original title and deed to the property in evidence. Um, I want the original party that initiated the loan at the foreclosure. I want to see somebody I ain't talked to. I, Fred, I remember you. You're not a party to the matter. All right, this law, we're talking strategy, right? They'll never produce the original mortgage. Why will they not produce the original mortgage? Because if they did, it would have 100 signatures on it, or maybe more. And it would immediately prove the fraud. But we ain't going there yet, are we? All right, this, let me just. On the rule of discovery, we just, just bring it to the table. We say, oh, I ain't saying I don't. I just want you to bring the bill that created the debt. Right? Make sure you got the United States Constitution with you, because there's usually a judge up there that's a chancellor talking trash. Mm -hmm. And you make sure that you write the Secretary of State and get his oath, his official oath. Have that with you, too, because that's part of your counterclaim. Write it down. Us for the prosecutor, too, and all the other guys. And you get um, Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution of the United States Republic of North America. 
You have that with you too. You can make that exhibit one, two, three, whatever you want to make it. Right? Because it tells you what money is. Then uh, from the Department of the Treasury, get a certified copy of what money is from the Secretary of the Treasury. You can get that. Oh, you make that uh, exhibit four. Hmm? Remember, this is foreclosure, right? Maybe have a couple dimes in your pocket, a couple quarters, dollars. Make sure they're all silver. Right? Now, before you do this, you're going to study the laws that govern contracts. I gave you a little bit of piece of paper earlier for you to study. How to live within contracts. Right? Then when they start talking trash, talking about what they owe you, you want to say, now, how much money did you give me? Sis, how much money you said they gave you? Nothing. Mm. Uh, another question. What is credit? No. Got an idea. You bring an empty jar with you, glass jar, or two. They're containers. And you put two tags on them. One tag you put on money, and one tag you put credit. You can do it with envelopes too if you feel like it. But jars is good because that allows you to see something. And while they're talking trash, you take your silver coins and put it in the money jar. And then tell them to put a copy of their credit in the other jar that they gave you. Oh, this is evidence. You can mark that exhibit five and six. And when they start talking about how much you owe, are you saying I owe money or do I owe credit? Because they're two different things. Are you seeing where we're going with, where we're going with this? Huh? I'm giving you an angle to talk in law, not in emotions of debt. Because in law, you must identify the substance. Because legitimate contract is substance for substance, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. it's not substance for substance, it's fraud, isn't it? And at that point, contract is void, isn't it? So if a debt is claimed and you can prove that they didn't give you money without a bunch of argument, just by demonstration by exhibit, the chancellor must move in your favor. Think about that. All right? So use that as a tool and teach that to somebody who's got a foreclosure coming up. Of course, there's a few more things I can throw in there, but that'll give you something to play with. And those who know law recognize what I just did. All right. Um, another thing, in order for you to have the capacity, status, look that up in the law dictionary, status. Mm -hmm. That sets up your capacity to exercise rights in any society or not. And without a free national name, you cannot exercise what is known as unalienable rights. You can only exercise privileges. And it's up to you what status you want to be in. You want to be Negro, black, and colored? They'll sell you privileges. They will come under licenses, permits. A national can claim rights because unalienable rights belong to living human beings. But privileges for a cost and a fee under feudal law come under straw men or people who are transacting business in the name of another nation of people. Like you see a dark skinned person say, hey, Joe Smith. Joe Smith's an Englishman, so therefore English, England has a right to, to levy a tax against them because they're transacting business in an alien name. It's fraud.
they just ain't charging you with the fraud. They'll charge you the tax. And they have a right to tax you, too. Are you understanding nationality again? Are you understanding why the Europeans put their family names on these people who thought they were free? No. When they put the family name on, it was a bond. It is a cognomen for them. It is a trademark on you under wardship. It is not a name. It's a trademark of wardship. And you are liable to. Now the deal of it is, since you were unconscious, if you knew law, you could argue that, couldn't you? But then, if you're conscious, you wouldn't be using it. I mean, are, are, you, are you following? We're presenting it from a law perspective so you can understand jurisdiction. So you can therefore understand economics. So you can therefore understand how they robbed you cleverly right in your face. Why you thought you had money. Every time you spent that fiat thinking it was a dollar, it was another note of debt placed against your name. And then they sold that and fractionalized that to compound it. They're labor certificates. They're not dollars. The real dollars are in reserve. That's what I call federal reserve notes. Because the notes is the note for the debt. Because the real money is on reserve. And you ain't using it. Are you understanding? So. Yes. Yes. How did business transact with that credit to get more? Because it's faith. This is how it works. Let me tell you how it works. When the U.S. demons claim you as a corporate entity citizen of their corporation under a naturalization, not nationalization, under a naturalization, you become chattel property. They place a bond against you for how much they think they can tax your labor for how long they estimate that you might live or how many offspring that you might have through her womb. Are you following me? Yeah. Which would be called wards of the state. Do you understand? Under the rule of a ward den. Are you following? Yeah. A bond is placed on it. They take it to the Christian bankers. And the bankers put a value on it. It's all on book, book work. Ain't no, no silver passes whatsoever. It's a bunch of zeros. Whatever they decide to put on it. Then they send that much on a printed note to duplicate the note that the Christian congressman wrote on your back from the crusade bankers. And they send it back to them, and that's what you got thinking it's a dollar bill. They gave you nothing. But they wrote a bond against you and your life for that to be satisfied eventually. Oh, that ain't where it stops. Then they tack interest on it. And they never gave you one cent. But they act it as your agent. Now on that faith, faith, blind faith, which is fiat, they put that into a bond and then put it on the bond market, the stock market, and that's why the stock market and the gross national product never match. Because it ain't got a damn thing to do with the other except what they make you think it does. Are you understanding? And so what happens is they do the same thing, and so another business allows you to rent materials on the promise, on the dead promise, that that will be satisfied. Because they already know you're never going to pay it. It's because you're sharecropping. Credit is sharecropping. It's design, as a matter of fact, it came from sharecropping. 
you'll never grow enough. Now, this is what happens. So you have what is known as the principle, the implied input, right? Then you have the interest tacked on it that keeps accruing, but the principle stays the same. After a while, the suitcase of the interest gets bigger than the principle. Now, for you to satisfy just the principle, that means you've got to draw more off. Um, for you to satisfy the interest, you've got to draw more off the principle, so you have to work harder. That's why not you and you have to work now to pay the bills that was when our grandfathers worked. They almost took care of the whole family with one job. You've got to understand what's happening here. And the real issue, you're looking at the dollar, what you think is a dollar, and the whole issue is your labor. Right in your face. Are you following me? Meanwhile, after they tack the interest on it, they taxing you while you're working. You'll never pay it. It's impossible. His mom, and then you, brother, because he was way. Say it again. It's compound interest. The interest is bigger than the principal and continues to grow. The principal stays the same. But the principal, what they're calling the money supply, everybody has to compete for to tap on it to get more to satisfy the interest while the principal stays at this level. And then when you move it, the debt increases again. Are you following? We're talking math. But we're talking book math, not substance math. My point, go ahead, because I want to make a point after that. The point that I'm making to you, when you look at the math of the structure of fractional lending, lending that never takes place, that's number one that exponentially accelerates. It's impossible to get out of it. So that's not even the point. The point is, what is the remedy? Nationalization. Do, are you following me? Say a little out. I'm trying to really understand what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, all right. I, I now understand what you're saying. Yes. Now listen. You must understand. All right. What's your nationality? All right. He's a Moor. All right. You're a Moor. Now listen. All right. Now, now listen. This is the trick. They will treat him, who is a Moor, true American, as if he's a foreigner here when he's our family just visiting our part of the land. In his mentality, if he thinks that he's a foreigner, they got him on multiple taxes that he's going to own that don't even really apply to him. He'll never get out of it. What is the remedy again? Nationalization. You got to go ahead, Mama. Nationalization, now look at this, this is nationalization. Now, she is mother. Directly, she's his mother, but she's also my mother. She's also the mother of every son in here and every other one. And that is the truth in nature and the truth in our culture. But we gave that culture up and adopted the culture of Rome. And so in Roman culture, she's only his mother. So whatever happened to him, he on his own. In true Asiatic culture, she's my brother. In true Asiatic culture, her children, if her husband ain't there, them children is mine. It don't mean that I have to have a relationship with her, but them children still mine. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it ain't, it's not even an argument, it's not an issue. If I got a sandwich, they got half. And if they hungry, they gonna get more. I'll just go out and work and get some more. They're still my babies. 
That's our culture. We gave that up because we wanted to be Christians. That's why they got your land. Are you following me? We refuse to honor our mothers and our fathers, and this is the price you're paying. Ask your question, and then we'll get back to where it was. My question is, so... No, I'm going to explain to you what nationality is, too, in a minute. Well, what, but can do. Now, she is his mother, right? Hmm? Yeah. You see you got his arm around her? Now, notice the turban on her head. See the jewel representing her pineal gland? Because that's what the jewel represents, just in case you all didn't know that. When you see the turban and the jewels there, it represents the pineal gland. Pineal gland is a spiritual gland. We lost our spirituality when we start adopting idol gods instead. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? We keep talking about we spiritual and we're full of shit. We have no relationship to the land, to the plants, and to the animals anymore. We don't even know how to read the weather anymore. We're full of doo-doo. We're not spiritual. We're phonies. Big. The only thing black about us is that our hearts because we're hypocrites. That's his mom. His mother. Do you know inheritance comes from in her retents? Your her retage? Her redimments? come from matriarchal principles of government, but we gave that up because we wanted to be patriarchal. So now Rome rules. And they place their name on you as a curse. And you're not called by your father's name. That's why you can't call or claim the inheritance. Because you want to be somebody you ain't. Oh, fine. Keep playing. I'm going to get to you in a minute, too. I ain't finished with you. <laughs> I want you to follow this. Nationality is derived from the Latin word nasi, nasio, nasi, means to come into being and to be born. Navel comes from umbilical cord. How many species of uma? do you got? Uma stands alone. Mother stands alone. And is the only one that produces a placenta, a planet, and brings a being here, manifested with the aspects of the energies of the moon and Venus. And the moon governs her womb 28 days, 2 hours, and 52 minutes in a cycle of 13 while the earth dances around the sun 12 times. And she brings an egg from either side of that ankh and attaches it to that crescent uterus. And that's where nativity comes from. That's where native come from. And that's where nationality comes from. And if you don't know your mom, you can't claim a nationality. And if you ain't got one, you can't get the inheritance. Now you understand why the Europeans put their family names on you when they claimed to release you? They stole your nationality. Therefore, they got your inheritance under wardship tenures. Write that down. Wardship tenures. Because that's what they're operating on in the claims that they have against you on all this bondage, all of them. Don't even think about what the name is, whether birth certificate, marriage certificate, license, forget all them. Wardship tenures, all of them come under that. <laughs> and under wardship tenures, they don't have to account for the body, they don't have to account for the land, and they don't have to account for the profits. And that's what colonial powers use in the Americas against the true American people who keep on faking trying to be somebody else. Are you following me? So on all these dead promised bonds they've created, which are mortgages, 
is, is what this international debt is and why this economic system is collapsing because people want to cash in these bonds because they accrued and multiplied and fractionalized to the point that they're worthless and they're trying to get something out of them before they are worthless absolutely nothing, which they never were in the first place. But there's nothing behind them and they're discovering it's only the people. Now we're back to what Abdullah was saying earlier. Who are the people? Do you know yourself? That's the point. Now you understand what colonialism is? What bondage really is? What your redemption is, is salvation, is nationalization to get out from under that bondage. Because it's the only political power that governments use to save nations. Are you following me? Polit I want you to understand what I'm saying from a law perspective. I don't want you to accept what I'm saying. I want you to examine what I'm saying from a jurisprudence perspective so that you can understand its function, its cause and effect function. Don't believe me. Examine what I, and if you don't understand, ask questions because I want you to understand what I'm saying. Without the honor of your mothers and your father from which the law comes, you cannot claim the law to your defense as a human being and being a part of the human family. Thereby, you're outside of the human family, particularly if you're branded. It's a serious matter. And it allows those bonds to be valid unless someone steps up to invalidate those contracts. And to have the capacity to do it, you must be indeed a sovereign. Are you understanding? Exactly, because a, because a slave can't own property. And if you're transacting business in another man's name and are not called by your father's name, you're committed a fraud, you're colored, and cannot call the law to the table anywhere on this planet. It's a legal trick they played on you. It's called symboliography. So right there. I need some help over here. You know the fly? Help me! Oh. I'm talking big stuff. I'm glad I ain't advertising stuff. I mean, this juice right here is delicious. She bring up peanut butter sandwiches. Now, symbolic. A A E A E A E. Oh, layography, not A. Now, this is the art of crafting, the art and cunning of crafting writs, documents, etc. All lawyers and all European industrialists, all Europeans that go to any of their pristine schools learn this, and this is how they write things with you, including them mortgages. They're written, written under symboliography. Whereas you don't know what the swell you signed. Or said. Whereas your ass, your ass, your ass. Uh, Whereas your ass. I ain't finished you yet, brother. I ain't forgot you. I'm going to give you something to work with. All right? Because um, the real deal of it is, after you've worked for so much, for, for so long, if the building, if, if your business is prosperous, you know, if it grows real big, they'll take it. If you're just making it, they'll just rape you, just keep you enough surviving to keep you working, paying taxes and other stuff. Because it's not yours. It's not yours. Excuse me, Mom. That's exactly right. Unless you're sovereign, you can't be sovereign if you're not national. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? So even when people are talking about sovereignty and they are, you know, it is interesting because sometimes you see people, you know, get a little bit of information on the Internet or some Europeans throw sovereignty packages around. People start trying to buy sovereignty and everything. And without a national, no, it's not. A, they, missed the, they missed the boat. An Asiatic writing this said, well, um, let me show you the sovereignty pack. This is 1500 It's cheaper than the other one over there, right? And I said, what's your name? You said Dred Scott. Well, Dred Scott's an Englishman. And I sell a package. You go file on papers all you want to. Guess what? Upon a challenge, you'll still lose because you ain't Dred Scott. Your status is dead in the eyes of the law because you're not an Englishman. And no matter how many generations you do it, fraud has no statute of limitations. Write that down, fraud, and check it out in law, and you see it has no statute of limitations. Islam, go ahead. Some of these things I want them to study because we want to go across. She wanted to know what statute of limitations. Statute of limitations, that means um, we can take the baby in the back and she can take a sleeping pill and sleep till she's 99 and wake up and sue him. And matter if she can die and come back and sue him. That means it doesn't die. The charge of fraud does not die. No. Hmm? No statute of limitation. You know, like some things, well, after a couple years, and then they can't charge you because it, the time didn't pass. You stole my sneaks, my favorite ones, too. And that was seven years ago, and this is statute of limitations. You can't charge her. Well, if it's fraud, then there ain't no statute of limitations. So think of this when we think about these contracts and these mortgages, too. Keep this in mind. I'm setting you up to make, give you some understanding of where I'm leading you in your thinking. Do you understand? So that you can bring remedy to yourself when it's necessary. Yes. Say that again. What did he say? If they commit fraud. If you what? If they commit fraud against you in taking your favorite And you charge them with fraud. In other words, you can charge them with robbery and it have a statute of limitation. If you charge them with fraud, it don't. Which means, think about this, y'all, because I'm also teaching you how to use the law a little bit. You understand? Now, brother, I'm going to get back. I'm going to come back to you while we get to the brother again. What they'll do is, uh, you, you, you got a tax number? You're looking in the ceiling. You better know. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're a taxpayer, huh? Mm-hmm. They own you, and they own the business. What you are is a caretaker for it. You've got the responsibilities that an owner does without the substance of being the owner. And they will constantly regulate you and find new ways to regulate you to keep you under control. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? No, he's taking care. He, yes, your property is the same way you do. Now, listen to this, and this is the other deal, Mom. There's a distinction between real estate, which is what they give under feudal law, and real property that comes under a lodial title. Two different categories. You know, and so the people need to understand this so they can understand how to, when they do these contracts, if they ever get in a point where they want to start kicking some butt with these contracts, that they take these instruments, reconstruct their own instruments, quick claims, et cetera, and stuff like that, put it in their free national name, sell it back to themselves with a dollar, et cetera, and take it off the tax rolls. Because being aboriginal people, the tax don't apply to you in the first daggone place. That's number one. So basically, people have been funding their own enslavement. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Really? Now, and this is, again, like this, now look, now say if you was giving him, say one of your houses, mom, right? Say you give me him one of your houses, and the house is, is in a name that you've been carrying that's really an Englishman or Welshman, European, the state has property or, or has claim on it first. 
As a matter of fact, when you transfer it to him, they can use an inheritance tax and actually tax him out that he has to sell it in order to even satisfy the tax. That he'll never get it. However, under national, they have no jurisdiction. But if you didn't know that, you know it now. Do you understand? Because it has no protection under the European name. He has a right to claim that which is his. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And he has a right to claim the rules on how it's transferred or whether or not they have jurisdiction. Now, and so the deal is rather than say to you whether or not it's going to him, I'm explaining to you what happens in law so that you can understand what you have to do. See, again, no matter how many generations that have passed down that our people have called themselves Joe Smith when they really ain't, it belongs to Joe Smith under the corporate state's jurisdiction. Do you understand? And all you are is a caretaker. But they sign you up as an owner so they can put the burden of maintenance on you and the burden of the tax of an owner on you without the substance of actual developmental powers to develop it properly so it could benefit you. Because it ain't yours. And z- Are you following? I'm talking about them telling you can't paint the house unless you pay them first with a permit. I'm talking about you can't fix your roof. You, oh, you like new windows and stuff? they putting red stickers and stuff on it. talking about stop. And then they make you fill out papers, tell how much you're spending, what you're doing, yeah. and tax that too. Well, and you were talking about you the owner. Would you, at what point you didn't know this was sharecropping? At what point you ain't figured this out? You and then her. Because I have not did my name correction yet. No, no, stop, 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 stop. You're saying because I have not done my name correction yet. Well, name correction is not enough. See, listen, someone can be conscious that they're more, but if they're not active on that information from a legal and lawful perspective, and taking their place amongst the affairs of men in the political arena, they may as well go back to the state. Because it means nothing. It's like having an account that you don't use. It's like having a glass of water on the desert and not drinking it. Well, guess what? You're going to be skin and bones just like that cattle skeleton you've seen over there again. Meaning that you can have substance, and if you don't apply it, it is useless to you. And you're an enemy to your own cause.